Ya. Oke, okay, Dokter Nurul. Oke, okay, Kristal. Yes. Oke, okay, Assalamualaikum. Uh, selamat pagi. Really, really good morning to all of the participants. I am Associate Professor Dr. Nurul Huda from University uh, Malaysia Sabah. Uh, uh, with happy on to meeting you uh, for this uh, first uh, self network webinar. So, I think uh, according to my data here, number of participants are already one uh, reached 170 participants is quite a good number, and all of the presenter uh, is ready uh, for the web seminar. So I think uh, before we start our program, uh, we need to start with the uh, Indonesian national anthem first. Yeah, uh, yeah. please, uh, Iqbal, can you play the Indonesian national anthem? Thank you, Iqbal. So the uh, topic of our first uh, self network webinar mm -hmm. is a global reset uh, in our quarantine economy. <laughs> Uh, webinar uh, we will uh, highlight uh, by a uh, uh, number of speakers from different country so you can refer to our brochure that uh, our uh, webinar will start with the presentation of uh, Dr. Nofizar our uh, self coordinator he will uh, deliver his keynote speaker on the agriculture food energy after COVID-19 pandemic after the presentation of the Professor Dr. Nevisar, will follow by a presentation of uh, Dr. Aida Asmi from UITM Malaysia on the Fragile Innovation in Blending COVID-19. After the presentation of the Dr. Wan Aida, uh, will follow by a presentation of Dr. Wayu Kassendra and also Dr. Medical Satyo Adi Jacksono on Pandemic Innovation and Defender Full Mass. Then we'll follow by uh, presentation of Dr. Hanilin Hidalgo team with a consist of Dr. Nam Huang Nguyen from Vietnam, Ms. Gusti Ayu Panska Dewi from Indonesia, Ms. Huang Din Bich Nguyen also from Vietnam, and Mr. Agustino da Costa Simenes from Indonesia. <coughs> so Dr. Hany and her team will present his, uh, her, their project <coughs> on consumption lifestyle of first smart generation in Asia after COVID-19 pandemic. 
So after all of the presentation, uh, our mentor for Dr. Helmi will present the concluding, uh, concluding remark uh, from all of the uh, presenter. I just want to remind to all of the participants. So after the presentation of the Dr. Aida, Dr. Huayu Kasendra, Dr. Anilin Tim, you can ask the question directly after the presentation. Otherwise, you can also can write your presentation in the Q&A menu. You can see your screen, the Q&A menu. You can type, you can type your uh, question there, and then the presenter will answer your question, your, uh, question uh, in the Q&A menu. But after the presentation of the respective presenter, you can directly uh, raise any uh, question. I think uh, for uh, this uh, around two hours, we can uh, enlighten our uh, knowledge on different aspects of the uh, global reset uh, in the quarantine economy. I think because it's a late time, uh, can I uh, call for an officer to start mm -hmm. your keynote speaker mm -hmm. on introduction? Okay, please, Prof. Novizai. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Nurul. <clears throat> uh, ladies and gentlemen, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Uh, on this occasion, I would like to give you all a few points as an introduction for this webinar. I divide content of my speech into uh, six sections. Uh, number one is the power of networking. Number two, coronavirus is changing the world. Number three, impact on agriculture and global food security. Number four, the importance of energy access and equality. Number five, agriculture, food and energy after COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the role of safe network. And the last one is acknowledgement for Uh, I start with uh, illustration. Some time ago, Prof. Usman Pato from Rio University, Indonesia, contacted me about sorry. Uh, one day, my friend Dr. Wahyu. Kaiseran Rao from University of Brunei Darussalam sent me a short message on my WhatsApp. He delivered his finding with Dr. Adi Satrio from Diponegoro University, who is being viral, namely Defender Full Mass, a very effective mass with cheap raw materials. I express my pride and give appreciation to him. I thought to myself how to make ending. At the same time, I contacted Dr. Aida from Malaysia to be a speaker at a webinar for the anniversary of Safe Network. At that time, she immediately agreed. I also contacted Dr. Hanilin Hidalgo from the Philippines to present the result of the reset with her team, where I was direct, indirectly involved in the research process. Dr. Hani agreed and contacted her research friend. I contacted Dr. Wayu again to invite him as one of the speakers, and he agreed. So in no more than one hour, this webinar plan was arranged. Prof. Nurul Huda from University of Malaysia Sabah said yes as the moderator and Prof. Helmi from Andalas University was willing to make a concluding remark. This can all be realized because of networking. Everything is easy and fun. <clears throat> we go to the illustration two. Last week, Prof. Usman Fato from University of Riau 
Indonesia contacted me about the webinar that will be held. The seminar topic was supply chain management. I asked him who is the speaker. He answered that Dr. Rasita Fani from UITM Malaysia will be one of speaker. Prof. Usman Pato also said Dr. Rasita also invited Dr. Pavali from Maijo University, Thailand as a speaker. And Dr. Pavali is already said yes. Then seminar with speaker from three countries will be conducted soon. This can be realized because of networking. Networking provide an exponential multiple effect. From these two illustrations, then we can feel that networking is power. <clears throat> that was uh, the initial goal of the, the establishment of the SAFE network, which was declared at Andalas University Indonesia by 16 university from Asia Pacific. SAFE network becomes a home for connecting people who are together doing something for a better world. Since its establishment, Safe Network has consistently conducted seven international conferences in various countries, conducted four summer courses and several workshops. Safe Network also have several projects like Bali Green in Bali and project two is Safe Rice and project three, Virtual Farm Academy. This Virtual Farm Academy conduct virtual lectures. There are 38 universities intended to join this program. At the moment, there are four topics are being prepared. Number one, uh, agritourism prepared by uh, CBSUA Philippines. And the second one, sensory analysis is being prepared by University Malaysia Sabah. And urban planning is being prepared by Pajajaran University Indonesia. And green product and life cycle assessment is being prepared by Andalas University. <clears throat> As one initiative, Safe Rice began with project with uh, an area 1.5 hectares and then expanded to 15 hectares in different area in Bali. This year, the planting of Safe Rice has exceeded an area of 220 hectares with specifically produced red rice with low glycemic index and reduced carbon emission by at least 15%. Various other activities have emerged among members of the SAFE network. Safe Network has grown into a big family. Becoming bigger together is our philosophy and friendship and happiness are the key words that make Safe uh, a unique organization that is always missed by its members. The following is some documentation that saw some of the safe network activities where networking is friendship and happiness. You can see uh, our activity during a uh, workshop in Bali on three rice projects. This is uh, the activities of members and this is uh, the picture during the uh, also on green uh, product in Chiang, Chiang Mai University, and this is visit to major university.
Coronavirus is changing the world. Coronavirus affects the world economically, socially, culturally, defense, and security. Coronavirus changed the way people think about human relationship, health, independence, and lifestyle. Coronavirus has affected agriculture, food security, and energy. Coronavirus has made people rethink the activities that must be carried out in the future after this epidemic end. The impact of coronavirus on agriculture and global food security. A recent publication by Harris M. Galanakis on the food system in the era of coronavirus revealed that there are four significant issues that the food industry and food supply chain should address in the new era. Firstly, as consumers are looking to protect themselves and their immune system by adopting healthier diet, the availability of bioactive ingredients of food and functional food might become a critical as the demand for this product may increase. Secondly, it's a significant issue in order to avoid the spreading of the virus between producer, retailers, and consumers. Clearly, food security issues have emerged due to the lockdown of a billion people inside their houses. Last but not least, the sustainability of the food system in the era of pandemic is another issue that the sector should address in order to restrict relevant crisis in the future. The World Food Program estimates that COVID-19 could double the number of people in low and middle income countries facing acute food insecurity by the end of 2020. The crisis is still unfolding and our initial observation includes the following. Transportation and economic restrictions are <clears throat> disrupting food system and the export bans and border closures may make things worse. Three, future agricultural production is threatened by the lack of labor, service, and inputs. Four, small and medium-sized enterpri enterprises that provides provide most production and post-farm agricultural service face financial ruin as a result of economic shutdown mandated for pandemic control. Delays in deliveries of essential food and agricultural input will affect food supplies for many months to come. COVID-19 is disrupting everything that one was part of the typical daily lives. This pandemic has shut down countries and caused economies to, to hit to our recession. Industries too are taking to hit. The energy sector in particular has a unique relationship with a coronavirus. And this pandemic is highlighting the importance of energy equality. Energy equality is a newer term, but it's a topic that has been around for years. It's the practice of providing all individuals with equal access and use of energy resources. This definition includes anything from technology to utilities to clean water. When energy and equality occur, it means some individuals don't have the same option or accessibility as others. This situation happens most con commonly in low-income area or mi minority neighborhood. How agriculture, food, and energy after COVID, and what is the role of self-network? 
the following are some things that could be of the concern of uh, the safe network. Number one, building virtual based education related to agriculture, food, energy, and health. Number two, develop strategies to strengthen local community based sec food security and food safety. Number three, exploring functional food that can be used to enhance immunity. And four, developing the home garden as a source of food and medicine for local people. And five, developing renewable and sustainable green energy on a small scale base that can increase local people's access to energy, such as the development of solar energy, energy that utilize, utilize water and wind resources. This is uh, uh, what uh, the role of self network in the future for uh, agriculture, food, energy uh, after the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, finally, uh, in this occasion, once again, thanks to Dr. Aida from UTM, UITM Malaysia. Thanks to Dr. Wahyu from University Brunei Darussalam and Dr. Satrio Adi Wijaksono from uh, University Diponegoro, Semarang. Thank you very much also to Dr. Hani and, and team, uh, Dr. Huang, uh, Ms. Siska, uh, Ms. Wong, and uh, uh, Mr. Agus from Timur Leste. And Thanks also to uh, Professor Dr. Nurul Huda from University Malaysia Sabah and Prof. Elmi from Andalas University. And thank you very much also uh, to uh, Mr. Rahmat Hidayat, the managing editor of JSA Journal, who have been uh, hosting uh, this webinar. I also thank uh, Perianto Sundang Penata, uh, the staff uh, for this conference, and Muhabal Baswada for audio visual design and uh, live streaming. Thank you very much to all participants. Please take care, stay safe, and stay happy. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum. Thank you for Nabiza for very good uh, presentation about the SAF activities for many years ago. And then for thank so thank you for highlight us with um, many activities of the uh, previous uh, SAF and the future activity of the SAF networking. So I think uh, most of us agree with you. We can become a, 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 a a family uh, part of the net networking because networking is very important and become bigger together is a principle of the asset networking okay uh, i'm sorry uh, because i'm uh, what do you call it uh, uh, forget to to introduce you but most of the participants are really familiar with you from the visa but maybe for the new member of the uh, SAF uh, network so let me reintroduce again about the prof uh, nofiza nazir uh, professor dr nofiza nazir is a professor on agriculture product technology at the faculty of agriculture technology andalas university in indonesia uh, he worked a lot in agriculture product technology, design uh, process, uh, product development, and life cycle assessment or LCA. His experience in the field of the LCA began when he when 
he was a visiting scientist at the University Kebangsaan Malaysia from 2008 to 2010 and followed by training and workshop on LCA, life cycle assessment for bioenergy in petroleum and petrochemical uh, college at uh, Chulalongkorn University and the National Metal and Material Technology Center, MTSC, Bangkok, Thailand from November uh, 13 to 2009. Uh, Prof. Nofisa joined a training on advanced parameter assessment on waste energy technology at the Technical University of Denmark, DTU, Copenhagen, Denmark, uh, November 2011, and carried out joint research with CMAT in Is it clear, right? uh, 11 again working with Pilar in this May to him. Uh, he is the author, become as a coordinator for the Asia Pacific Network Agriculture Food and Sustainable Energy, which is called as a SAF Network. SAF so, Network is a network of university, educator, researchers, and activity in the Asia Pacific region, which collaborated in the analysis, synthesis in agriculture, food sustainable energy. So on December 17 to or 14 with some great Indonesia, they also established also Indonesian Life Cycle Assessment or Life Cycle Assessment Network or ILCON, and being a vice chairman of this association from 2014 till 2019. I think this is a very good uh, CV uh, from uh, Professor Dr. Nafisak Nasir. Thank you again, Nasir. Okay, we will uh, center. So let me introduce uh, our next prayer center, uh, Dr. Aida Asmi. So uh, Dr. Aida Asmi is a senior lecturer in food science and technology from the Faculty of Applied Sciences, University Technology Mara, UITM, Sahalam, Selangor, Malaysia. Apart from lecturing, she also involved closely with the industry as a new food development consultant. Yeah. Halal and other food related certification such as MST, uh, GMP, Food Manufacturing Practice, and SACCP, Hazard Analytical Critical Control Point, which is very important for food industry. She also on that, uh, this one is quite interesting. Uh, favorite food uh, industries, a uh, startup company of UITM, which focus on the development of functional foods. Her main product is Una Cafe, coffee-based product, which is a functional coffee with high protein and uh, vitamin D. She has a numerous innovation competition. Uh, she had won numerous innovation competition and was granted, uh, I think this one a new one, a Newton Fund from the Royal Academy of Engineering, uh, uh, which was around uh, 85,000 ringgit Malaysia to attend a two weeks a leader Leader in Innovation Fellowship Camp or LIV Camp in the UK in last February, I think two or three months ago, yeah, Dr. Aida. Yeah. Uh, LIV uh, Leader in Innovation Fellowship is an international business coaching program which where participants come from 19 centuries and their business performance will be monitored closely for 14 months. So uh, today, Dr. Aida Asmi will talk about the frugal innovation. Let we uh, learn together from Dr. Aida about this kind of innovation, which allow people to innovate even with limited resources available, uh, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. Her lecture will focus on several frugal innovation that has changed the way people fight over COVID-19 crisis. Without further ado, we would like Call Dr. Aida to deliver her speech on Google Innovation in Battling COVID-19 for 20 minutes. So please, uh, Dr. Aida, we looking, we waiting for your presentation. Okay, thank you very much, uh, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Nurhuda. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A very good morning to everyone. Uh, participants from Indonesia, Malaysia, Brunei, Vietnam, and Philippines. Hopefully, all of you are fine, and thank you for participating in this webinar. Um, I would like to convey my gratitude to Prof. Novi for inviting me uh, to be one of the hosts for today, and also to Safe Network 
uh, for giving me the opportunity to share with all of you about uh, frugal innovation in battling uh, COVID-19. Okay, let me share my slide here. All right. Okay. Okay. So, um, as Dr. Nurul uh, introduced uh, me to you, so I'm Aida from Faculty of Applied Sciences, uh, University of Technology, Mara Sha'alam. Okay. So let's look at. Uh, okay. Let me. Okay. Now I can see the whole slide. Right. So what is actually the frugal innovation, right? The frugal innovation or the frugal, also known as the frugal engineering, is the process of reducing the complexity and the cost of a good and its production. Uh, usually, the, product, the innovation removes some of the non-essential features from a durable goods in order to sell it in developing countries. Uh, such services or product uh, need not to be the interior quality, but must be provided cheaply. All right, and this uh, term of frugal innovation actually was coined by Carlos uh, Gosch and then the Joint Chief uh, of Renault and Nissan, who stated that frugal engineering is achieving more with fewer resources. So frugal innovation also associated with the term less is more, okay? Means that you innovate something or create something faster, cheaper, and better. Right, uh, you, uh, frugal innovation also known in many other um, terms, and in India is is very popular with the term jugat innovation. Okay, all right. So as for the frugal innovation, uh, they have a nice concept which is eighty to twenty concept, uh, which twenty percent is referring to the cost reduction when you innovate, you innovate new things you have to consider the reduction in cost because uh, you have to remember the principle, which is less is more. You produce better, faster, and cheaper, right? And at least 85% uh, solution to a problem. So you manage to solve a problem that arises. okay? So as for today, uh, I will be focusing on few examples of frugal innovation during this um, COVID-19 pandemic. As we know, it affects so much, right? The crisis affects the whole world, as, the, the, uh, as Prof. Noviza explained just now. So let's see how frugal innovation managed to uh, control or make a world better during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. All right. First is the uh, four-way ventilator splitters. As you can see the photo here, this is how it looks like, right? So this ventilator actually allow one ventilator to be used for two, uh, for uh, to be used for four participants, right? Usually the normal ventilators can push 2,000 uh, milliliter oxygen per minute into lungs of a 200 80 kilogram body, right? But normally patients do not wake this much. So 280 is very big, <laughs> right? And very, very heavy. So therefore a ventilator can actually provide enough oxygen for four people who wake around 70 kilogram each. And this uh, ventilator, four-way ventilators, was found by the Pankaj Gupta, which is the founder of the Singapore-based startup. Uh, which he had brought together 200 volunteers across India to design, to build, and donate more than 10,000 four-way ventilators, uh, splitters for hospital uh, in order to battling the coronavirus uh, pandemic. All right. And then uh, the next innovation is the boom sprayer. Okay. Uh, what are the most effective way to disinfect a city? As we know, COVID-19 uh, be able to spread very fast. And in this uh, Srinagar city, they choose to use boom sprayer that spray the, disin the disinfectants on both sides of the road. And now 
it is becoming a common sight on the street of Srinagar. Because normally people will uh, disinfect uh, personally. I mean, they will carry the disinfectant uh, at, uh, at the back uh, of their body and just spray, uh, just spray the uh, their environment. I mean, but in this case, they are using boom sprayer, which is more effective. Here in the photo, you can see uh, it is uh, being carried out using a small lorry. Okay. Right. Next is a Jivan light ventilator. A Jivan light ventilator is uh, developed, was developed by IIT Hyderabad Center for Healthcare Entrepreneurship. It is a low cost, portable and energy use ventilator, uh, which can be operated through the phone application. Uh, it can be also uh, it can also be battery operated uh, and work for five hours without proper power supply, and this enabling uh, it to the to deploy in the areas without proper supply power supply. Uh, as we know, the senior citizen and the elderly patients affected so much by COVID nineteen, and normally they need vent ventilators and uh, given light um, is the problem because it is uh, portable and easy to be operated through phone apps. All right, so this is another uh, example of innovative ways. Uh, this, this might not be very accurate to battle the uh, coronavirus 19, but Due to the extreme fear to COVID-19 pandemic, we all know that it can be spread through touching, right? So from the surfaces of uh, human or things. So these bankers' creative method to disinfect the check leave netizen to impress with his action, right? So he ironed the check that he received from his customer be before he proceed for the next process. Okay. So, in this case, uh, we may use uh, sanitizer, for example, but it is wet, okay, it is a liquid, so it's not possible to be used on check. So, this banker choose to iron the check using high temperature. And then, uh, we also saw some uh, frugal innovation uh, within the lecturers who use the DIY Lightroom box as their mini studio uh, in order to facilitate online distance learning during lockdown. As we know, during this lockdown, students are not allowed to be in the faculty and the campus. So all of them need to go through uh, online distance learning. And this is also a challenge to, uh, to lecturer to deliver their online courses. So with this frugal innovation, using a simple box, recycle box, it, 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 it reduced the cost of uh, buying new tablet uh, to help the students with their tutorial and so on. As you can see, it has a hole here at the top of this box. So they will put their handphone over here and while they are writing uh, inside the box to give a good view to the student to watch uh, their tutorial video. All right, next is a 3D printed uh, face shield. Uh, due to the due to the shortage of uh, face shield and also the PPE uh, during this COVID-19 pandemic, NGOs and universities took a protective measure to mass produce a face shield frame using a plastic injection molding process following the high demand from hospital and clinics, right? And they are using uh, a cheap plastic uh, that normally being used by the students to do their assignment. So this innovation at least can help uh, the frontliners to protect themselves during handling the COVID-19 patient. So another example is this milkman, right? So this milkman uses jugad 
innovation, the frugal innovation to ensure no contact amid uh, COVID-19 lockdown. So he is selling the uh, milk, selling milk to people and in order to uh, prepare for this, uh, so to make sure the social distance between consumer and himself. So he created uh, one simple equipment here, if you can see, to uh, dispense the milk, right? So this is examples of frugal innovation. And lastly, we have combat, where a team of 102 Malaysian doctors, engineers, and designers globally has become uh, has come up with this solution for effective and efficient mass testing of COVID-19, inspired by phone booth light testing conducted in South Korea. So this is where uh, the combat combat model. Uh, basically helps uh, the frontliners okay, to reduce their burden so that uh, the suspected COVID-19 patient can come to uh, this uh, combat mobile test unit to have, uh, to have themselves tested for uh, COVID-19. All right. So, and there are also few innovations that spark during this COVID-19. Uh, this is examples of robot, okay. Coachy-based startup Asimov Robotic uh, has been developed, uh, sorry, has developed a robot which deploy hospital to easy, to ease the pressure on the medical staff. And this robot actually carry food, medical and clinical consumables such as the face mask, the hand sanitizer, and navigate freely in the hospital. We understand during this COVID-19, uh, the frontliners, we are short of um, human resources to, to help with the uh, screening and also taking care of these COVID-19 patients. And this robot helps uh, to reduce the burden of our frontliners. Okay, and then, uh, you also have drones, okay? The IIT alumni developed drones with infrared camera for thermal screening. We understand uh, that now uh, every shop, okay, every places need to uh, screen their consumer's temperature, body temperature, in order to avoid, to avoid uh, any possible cases of um, COVID-19 uh, cases. Uh, and these drones also being used as to deliver food, medicine, and spraying disinfectant. So with this innovation, uh, of course, we can reduce the human resources. Okay. So as a conclusion, uh, innovation is change that unlocks new value. And during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, we can see a lot of innovation that actually gives a new value, right? And as our Steve Shop here said, innovation is the only way to win. Yes, we are battling over COVID-19, a very serious pandemic, and innovation is the only way we can win the coronavirus. So uh, as a conclusion, frugal innovation enable all levels of people to receive the benefits regardless of their social status. And it is very important to practice a triple helix model of innovation, which integrate the efforts between the universities, industries such as startup, and the government in response to COVID-19. So with that, I thank you. Okay, thank you, Korea, for your uh, very good presentation on the Google Innovation. So your presentation made me remember about the biographer uh, TP series yeah, from Richard Gin. I think most of the uh, participants from Indonesia are familiar with the biographer, how to use the uh, less resources, less capital to produce something, yeah, uh, to make uh, to produce uh, some equipment with a faster process and also with cheaper cost. Yeah. And then you already list uh, many uh, examples uh, from the uh, Google uh, innovation. So uh, I have a question from the participant here. 
But if the participant for all the said, if you want to uh, uh, ask directly to Dr. Oida, we will come. You can you can uh, unmute your your you can uh, unmute your your microphone and then talk directly uh, to your microphone. If you have any question, which want to address to Dr. Oida. Otherwise, uh, Dr. Aida, we have uh, two questions from you from the Q and A. Hello, Dr. Aida. Yeah, 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 I'm here. Yeah, okay. Uh, one question is a uh, uh, two is a how important uh, in patient for less developed countries? Yeah, uh, it's the first question. And the second question is a uh, how to increase. I think this one is very important. How to increase the sense of innovation for young generation? Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, we have two questions uh, so, so far. Uh, I can repeat again. Uh, one, first question is how important innovation for less developed countries? And the second question, how to increase the sense of innovation for young generation? Okay, please, Dr. Aida. Okay, um, actually for the first question, how important innovation for developing countries is very important. Because as we know, developing countries, uh, the social uh, status is lesser than the developed countries. So definitely they need frugal innovation, which is uh, something that can be created faster, cheaper and with less resources. So that is where we need people to think innovatively, right? And this actually associated to the second question. Uh, what is it again, Dr. Dr. Nurul? Uh, how to... I how to increase uh, a sense of innovation for young generation. Uh, right. For uh, our young generation. To, all right. How, how to increase the sense of innovation. Actually, there are a few uh, criteria for, the, for uh, a good innovators where they need to have their, the DNA of innovators, right? There are a few things that can, I can recap uh, right now. For example, to be a good innovator, uh, they need to ask a lot. Okay, they may they must have a curiosity, ask a lot. If they look at something, they will always think of how can I improve this? How can I do this better? All right, how can I cut the cost of this uh, product or pro or program? Or how can I solve the problem? Okay, and then they need to observe a lot, observe a lot, observe their surrounding. The third one is very uh, important to go for the experiment. Okay, if you have the basic idea, why don't you, you try, try the hypothesis, go for the testing. Okay, and the next one is, is very important for innovators to have a huge networking. So safe network is the best place for you to have a, the great networking because we have vast um, expertise in this group, so we can always inculcate the innovation uh, in, in ourselves. And the last one is, of course, to associate all these four things together, work together, and uh, innovate something greater. So I hope it answers uh, the question. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ida, for, uh, for the highlight of the way how to increase the sense of innovation, especially to young generation. Yeah? So we also uh, received a number of uh, questions from the participant. So can I read the uh, question from the participant from the Mr. Ikrak Tagunasa? Is there a further need innovation to combat COVID-19 based on plans? Oh, um... I think they, they must have, but uh, I'm not sure because I'm not focusing on that area. Uh, maybe I can get back to you later for that question. Okay, thank you. And another question is from Amelia Zulianti Sirega from University of North Sumatra, Medan. Uh, how to improve and adopt the technology of drone to farmer for spraying Rashfield in Malaysia during the COVID-19 is still related with your frugal innovation by using the drone. How, can you get my question, Dr. Aida? I can, I can, okay, let me see. How to improve and Hello, adopt? Hello, Dr. Aida? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how to improve, uh, where's the question, sorry. How to, how improve, to improve and adopt, and adopt. Okay, the technology of drones? Because you're talking about the drones, eh? Uh -uh. Yeah, yeah, to, to, to. 
how to improve and adopt the drone technologies yeah to the farmer for uh, spraying uh, of his field okay as for this uh, question uh, I, I knew few of my friends uh, who is the researcher are working on this technology the drone technology and they are actually now approaching the plantation side okay such as uh, big plantation in Malaysia like, like Sam Dabi and all that to actually adopt this technology. All right. I think in a short time we will see the uh, uh, we will see the new normal. Okay, maybe you can use the term new normal for this innovation for the plantation as well. Okay, thank you, Dr. Aga. So for the, uh, all of the participants, if you still have a, a, a question to Dr. Aida, please you can write in the Q&A uh, menu. So I will wait for you for another two minutes if there are any questions that you need to address to Dr. Aida. I think no more question, Dr. Aida. But I think it's after the uh, if the uh, participant come with uh, question, and then you can answer directly in the uh, Q&A menu, Dr. Aida. Okay, thank you, Dr. Aida, for your uh, nice you. presentation. Okay, and then we can uh, follow by next presenter. So for next presenter is uh, Dr. Wayu Kaisandra. Uh, together with a uh, medical doctor, uh, Satyo Adi Wijaksono, they will present the uh, presentation on the pandemic innovation defender full mask. So let me introduce uh, Dr. Wahyu Kasendra. Uh, Dr. Wahyu Kasendra is an assistant professor at the Faculty of Integrated Technologies, University of Brunei, Darussalam, Brunei. He holds a degree, master in in mechanical engineering from Ipono Negoro University Master and University of Bolongong Australia for PhD, all in the mechanical engineering fields. He is a research coordinator at Faculty of Integrated Technology, University of Brunei Darussalam, and editor of two prestigious journal, uh, Journal of Symmetry Journal uh, by MDPI with uh, 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 impact factor 2.173 and Journal of Shocks and Vibration by Hidavi with impact factor 1.628. Dr. Wayu is also Deputy Managing Director of Ikatan Ilmuan Indonesia International, Inter 